Okay, so today, today we are going to do some programming on the BTX multi-app planner. So this is a Monaco BTX radio transceiver. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're come, going to come into your planner. Once you open it up on your on your laptop, uh, you're going to go to File and New. It's going to pop up with this new window with your BTX firmware version. There's been a lot of different versions over the years, but the latest, greatest version that we've got is C.2.10. So if it's a brand new BTX, you can click on C.2.10 and go from there. If you don't know what version it is, you can look on the BTX. There should be a little chip about the size of your thumbnail with a BTX firmware version, something similar to this or C.2.6, 2.8, 2.10, whatever it shows on there pretty easy to find. Once we pick out what firmware version we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Over on the left hand side, you're going to see where it says BTX configuration and expansion zones. So with this planner, what you want to do is if you want to just look at something, you can left click on it. If you want to change something, you can right click on it. Okay, so we're going to right click on BTX configuration right here. It's going to give us a new window with three tabs across the top. Some of, this, some of these options in here are also for security units, so we don't need to necessarily hit any of those. We're not going to in this video. So the first thing we're going to see here is where it says field assembly, and down here where it says BTX transceiver address. So this is going to be something between 1 and 2040. Your fire station or someone down at your central station is going to tell you what unit address they want you to put into this BTX. In this case, I'm just going to pick whatever favorite number I have. We're just going to do 88 for today. The next thing down, communicator type. Um, communicator type is going to be standard. There are a few facilities that have communicator plus. Um, most likely you do not. Um, if you don't know for sure, you can always call Monaco and find out and they have a, a list of facilities that have Communicator Plus. There's only three or four that I know of that are even using the Plus protocol, so most likely you're going to be standard. This first video or this first uh, file that we're going to do, we're going to do just a basic BTX fire unit. We're not going to do audio or MNS or anything like that on this first one. We'll come back here after we get done with this and we'll do a whole another file with the audio and mass notification settings, things like that. So for now we're going to leave the audio board off and we're just going to skip that for now. So to go to the next tab, I can either click Next or I can just come up here to Expansion Cards and click on my Expansion Cards tab. Now for here, um, I'm going to add what, however many expansion cards I have. Now these are the cards that go in the slots um, in the expansion backplanes. I can have anywhere between 1 and 14 of these if I had a double wide enclosure. So in this BTX, I'm going to go ahead and just put one in there. It's going to use an extra address, which we'll see here in another uh, screen. I don't have any security cards. This uh, BTX can do security also, but I'm not going to talk about that really here. So zero security cards. The next tab over, I can either hit next or come up here to access control. And access control is more security stuff, so again, we're not going to cover any of that here. This is just going to be a basic fire unit. So we're going to go ahead and come down here and click Done. It's going to ask you uh, if you want the expansion zones have to be downloaded to, uh, to activate them. It's just going to let you know that, hey, the zones need to be downloaded, so do you want to continue? Yes. All right, so my first unit address was number 88. And because I added expansion zones, or expansion cards, it's going to give me my next unit address. So the main communicator, you have four zones that you can play with. And then zones 5 through 16 are all going to be reserved for internal Monaco use, depending on what we tell the BTX it's going to do. The expansion card starts off at the next unit address, number 89 in this case. And we, it sees how many zone cards that we programmed in there. So I can come in here and I can say two cards, four cards, eight cards, 14 cards. And it's going to take however many unit addresses down here that it needs to get that done. So come back over here to the left-hand side. Click on the plus sign next to BTX configuration. 
you're going to see three new things pop up, communicator, access control, and intrusion detection. So access control and intrusion detection are more security stuff. Again, we're not going to touch that here. What we will do is we'll right click on BTX communicator and it's going to give us a new window with four tabs across the top. So the first tab is mostly all, again, security stuff. We don't need to really mess with that here. So we can basically skip this first tab for reporting sources and just go straight to reporting options. So I can either click on the tab or I can hit next, whichever one I want to. The first option here is the enclosure tamper. So you want to take a look at your BTX enclosure and do you have a tamper switch on the door of that enclosure? If not, which most don't. Security units do quite a bit, but fire units typically don't. If you don't, go ahead and click never. That way it'll disable the tamper switch. If you don't do that, then you'll get a T for tamper when you start pulling the unit from the central station. AC fail and zone faults. So this is for if you have an AC fail on the BTX, do you want to send troubles back to the central station or not? If you have a facility that has a uh, high probability of base-wide power outages, then you might not want to send a whole bunch of troubles back to the central station every time that happens. Most people go ahead and set that for enabled. That way they just send everything, and if the central station wants to have you change it later on, you can always come back in here and do that. Four-hour battery fault, um, not usually used very often. Most people go ahead and just click never there. So once we've got that, we can hit next or click on zone configuration for the next tab. On here, we've got our onboard zone delay. So we got either three seconds or 25 seconds for my onboard zone delay. Now these are the onboard zones on the main BTX electronics package. The zone cards also have a separate little spot, which we'll see here in a minute, to do the same thing. These are just for the onboard zones. Zone text descriptions down here. So we can type in whatever I'd like here, um, whatever text descriptions that I want for those zones that I've got wired up. Now again, these first four zones are the four zones on the main BTX electronics package. Zones 5 through 16 are all reserved depending on what I tell the BTX to do. So most likely you're not going to see those pop up at all. Zones 1 through 4, you can type in some stuff in there if you'd like. Be aware though that the BTX does not take this information. The only place this is stored is in your original planner file. So you can type whatever you'd like in here, but the next person that goes and pulls this file out of the BTX, these descriptions are going to be blank. So make sure and write those descriptions on the outside of, or the inside of the door, on the label in there. That way, whoever pulls the file out the next time knows what those descriptions are. So type our descriptions in here, whatever you'd like. Go ahead and go to the next tab for hardware. This top option under the hardware tab, again, this is for our relay board. If we have a relay board attached to it, we'll do that here in the next file. Um, mostly it's security stuff though, so it's either going to be central controlled from the fire station or you're going to have security stuff here, which uh, we're not going to do in this video. So after that, we've got our onboard beeper, our local audible alert. So this is what do you want the onboard beeper to sound for. Um, sound for power status and security zones, fire MNS zones only, power status for fire MNS and security zones, or my favorite which is off. And after that we are done. Once you hit done you're going to see your first unit address right here which is unit number 88, all the zone positions that are there, any text descriptions that you have typed in there, the zone verif the verification delay for those zones and the zone status at this particular moment. Now right now they are all disabled. The zones are enabled from the central station so they have to do a zone download over the air from the central station to your BTX to enable these zones. Right now they won't do anything until that is done. Zone 16 or zone 14 sorry zone 14 is the expansion card com fail zone. So this zone monitors the communication to all your expansion cards for the whole BTX. Whether you've got one card or you've got 14 cards, doesn't matter, this zone is going to always pop up if you tell it it's got any of them. So, 
make sure and program that and make sure the central station knows that that zone needs to be enabled down at the central station. Otherwise, you'll get some errors down there that um, makes people a little bit confused. So, from there, we can click on, if we want to do some descriptions for our expansion card, if I come back over here to the left, I click on the plus sign next to expansion zones, and I see there's a plus sign next to fire. So if I click on the plus sign next to fire, then I get a zone, zone card on backplane one, slot one. If I want to change that, if I want to do anything with the zone uh, descriptions, I can right click on it, and it takes me to a screen very similar to what we saw for the onboard zones. So I can type in descriptions here if I want, whatever I'd like, and then down below is my zone verification delay. So this is just for this card. Each card has its own zone verification delay. You can se separate each card if you feel like it. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and hit done. From here, there's not much else I need to do. There's, you come up here and go file and save as. Save your file, typically I do maybe the building number that you're working on and today's date, whatever that happens to be. Save it somewhere in a known location you can get back to uh, and easily find it if you need it. Up here under utilities, you've got port settings. So make sure you know what COM port you're using when you go to do the data transfer to the BTX. If you're using a serial USB to serial adapter, make sure and go into your start menu down at the bottom left or in device manager, figure out what uh, COM port that you're using for that particular USB to serial adapter. Make sure and change it to from anywhere from one to nine that it shows here. Mine, I don't have one hooked up right now, so it's gonna say no COM port available. Once you've got the COM port straightened out, then you can come up here to where it says read, write, and cancel. So read is when you're going to pull the file from the BTX to your laptop. Write is taking the file from your laptop to the BTX and cancel. Well, that's pretty obvious. So what you would do is you'd go ahead and click on write. I don't have BTX hooked up right now, so it's going to give me an error if I do. But you go ahead and click write. Then down here on the bottom right-hand portion of the screen down here somewhere, it's going to give you a little blue progress bar as the data transfer happens. So... For a standard BTX with no audio board, no relay board, nothing like that, just standard fire plain Jane BTX, that's really about it. So, from here, I'm going to show you how to do a BTX with an audio board and a uh, relay board and some mass notification settings. So, we're going to go ahead and make a new file. Go file and new. I'm not going to save this one. Again, I'm going to go ahead and do a brand new C.2.10 BTX. And it's going to take us back to what we saw before. Now, I'm going to run through this a little bit faster since we already covered it in the first section. Right-click on BTX configuration. I'm going to come in here under this first window and choose my unit address. I'm going to do number 10 this time. Again, communicator type should be standard. In this case, we do have an audio board because we're going to be doing mass notification settings for this. So that means we're going to be doing live voice from the central station and possibly pre-recorded settings from the central station. So in this case, yep, we're going to go ahead and click on audio board installed. And on any newer BTX, anything B.99 or higher, we're going to go ahead and check this audio board supervision, and it will let us know if there's anything wrong with the audio board, and it does its internal checks, and it will let us know if there's anything wrong. So from there, we'll go ahead and hit the next or expansion cards. I'm going to come back up here, tell it however many expansion cards that I have on this BTX. One, two, four, up to 14 cards. I'm going to say two in this one. And the last tab for access control, we're not going to worry about, and we're not going to worry about anything for security since we're not doing any security stuff here. So go ahead and click done. I'm going to say that zone downloads required to activate the zones. Yes, I'm going to continue. 
click on the plus sign next to BTX configuration. We're going to right click on communicator just like we did before. I'm going to come in here, this uh, window with four tabs across the top, reporting sources. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Don't need to do anything here because again, that's all security stuff. Reporting options, send BTX enclosure tamper. I don't have a tamper switch on my enclosure. I'm going to enable my zone troubles for an AC fail, that's fine. But I'm not going to send a four hour battery fault. And again, it's up to you whether you want to set that or not. Zone configuration, next tab over. Zone delay, three seconds or 25 seconds. And my zone text descriptions here for my first four zones on my electronics package if I want to put something here. After that, I go ahead and hit either next or hardware. First tab on the first option on the top of the hardware tab for central control. Yes, our relays are going to be central control. Our local audible alert, my favorite, off, but you can again set that for to beep whenever you'd like it to go off. I'm going to set it to off. And done for there. Okay, so now this is where things change just slightly from the plain Jane fire unit. I'm going to come over here next to communicator and I'm going to click on the plus sign. Now I get three new options for central communication, live voice communication, and mass notification. Again, we're going to be doing mass notification on this BTX, so we need to go through and set all these settings. Most of these settings are going to be fairly standard for most of your mass notification panels that are out there. There may be some differences on your audio levels, things like that, but for the most part, all these settings are going to be pretty standard for most of your MNS panels. So we're going to right click on central communication first. Most of these should already be done for us, so the central communication behavior should be primary only. Primary communication mode should be FSK radio. And if you wanted to, if you had secondary or fallback to secondary, things like that, then especially for security units, they could do that. So in this case, we're already ready to go, primary only for our central communication behavior. Primary communication mode is going to be FSK radio. Secondary, we're not going to mess with that at all. So we are done there. Live voice communication. So we're going to go ahead and right click on live voice communication. Primary live voice mode. So if we're going to be doing live voice over the air to this BTX and into the building, then we're going to go ahead and set this for voice radio. Secondary live voice should be none. And we are done there. This last one for mass notification, go ahead and right click on that. It's going to give us a window with three tabs across the top. The first tab for live voice is going to have a bunch of different options here. So live voice mode is going to be live voice with speaker control. It's the only other option other than none, so click that. Live voice PA amplifier setting. This is where your different mass notification panel is going to come into play. Most of the MNS panels out there are going to be one volt peak to peak or one volt RMS. So it's really up to you on what setting that you need to do. If you click on one volt peak to peak, you go ahead and do your live voice settings or your live voice activation from the central station and it seems a little bit low, the audio is a little bit low, then you can come back in here and change this to one volt RMS. It might help it out a little bit. So most panels though that I've seen so far are going to be one volt peak to peak. Over here on the right hand side, RMS microphone station. So this setting was actually for some of the old wheel lock SP40 panels. So most of the newer panels that are out there now don't need this checkbox checked. So you can leave that uh, alone for now unless you know for sure that you need to actually check that. Now this is for the old wheel lock panels that only had one audio port into them. So they would take the audio from a remote microphone, run it through the BTX and into the MNS panel that way since they only had one port for one microphone. Any of your newer panels have multiple ways to hook up multiple microphones, so you don't need this checkbox anymore. But what we do need is we need this K1 relay closes with live voice activation. So basically what we're doing is we are fooling the MNS panel into thinking that this BTX is just another remote microphone. So that's basically what this does, is the K1 relay on the audio board will close whenever we activate live voice and let the MNS panel know that, hey, we've got live voice going on just like a regular push-to-talk microphone. So we'll go ahead and check that box. 
Keep Alive timeout, uh, pretty rare that anybody uses that. It was uh, used on a few different facilities, but 99% of your facilities are gonna use your regular live voice timeout. Now, this is up to the facility and the AHJ as far as what they want this set to. Most places are gonna have that set for either five minutes or 10 minutes. Okay, so zero is no timeout, or you can go one to 60 minutes. Then we're gonna go to the next tab for pre-recorded. Go ahead and click on there or hit next. So pre-recorded mode, we are going to set for relays. Most panels, most MS panels don't want relays with K1 active because the K1 relay that we're talking about is the audio board. So the K1 relay on the audio board is going to be live voice. So typically if you do this, then as soon as this activates, it's going to override your pre-recorded with live voice and nobody's going to hear anything. So most of your panels out there are just going to be set for relays. Pre-recorded timeout, very similar to what we have on the uh, live voice timeout. So it's either going to be 5 minutes or 10 minutes. Most of them are going to be 10 minutes. And either click on the tab up top for MS groups or hit next. So some, fa some facilities use MS groups to group their mass notification units into areas of the facility. Um, we're not really going to cover that here. If you have any questions on that, you can call Monaco Product Support and we can kind of go through that in addition to what they have at your D21 Central Station because that's really where most of that is going to happen. Your D21 is going to determine what group that these units are going to be in and then we'll go from there. So, from here, we are done with that screen. Then, if we want to, back over here on the left-hand side, if we want to come down for our expansion cards, we can edit our zones just like we did on the previous file. Click on the plus sign next to expansion cards, or expansion zones, then click on the plus sign next to fire, and right-click on your expansion card. Again, you can put your descriptions in here if you'd like, and play with your zone delay. Once I do that one, that's the first card. Then if I want to go on to the second card, I can click on that, and that's positions five, six, seven, and eight. If I had cards three and four in here, you would see positions nine, 10, 11, 12, and then the fourth card would be 13, 14, 15, and 16. So from there, we are basically done. Again, once you have the file done, you go up to File and Save As. Save it wherever you'd like, whatever file name you'd like. Check your COM port settings. Make sure that your COM port is set to the same one that your USB to serial adapter is set for. Then go either Read or Write. Okay, so Write is going to go from the laptop to the BTX. If you have any questions on programming, you can always call Monaco Product Support, 509-926-6277, and we can answer any questions that you guys have. Another video that we're going to do is going to be how to program a BTX with Hyperterminal, TerraTerm, PuTTY, or Procom.